Hello, my name is Jens Stapford from Douglas. I will talk about ARM Cortex M1 for FPGAs. So, to understand the ARM architecture, we have a quick look into the different application processes ARM supplies. And with the ARM 11, ARM changed to call them by a number. So, ARM divides them into three application areas. A, R and M. So the Cortex-A architectures are for the application market and uh, include an MMU for applications like mobile phones and TVs and uh, set-top boxes and things like that. The uh, <coughs> Cortex-R family is designed for real-time applications and the embedded market. So they include an MPU and they're usually for so-called closed systems so you wouldn't expect someone else loading down software or starting unexpected software there. The application area we want to talk a little bit more today about is the M architecture so the Cortex M architecture family is designed for the microcontroller market and especially in this area ARM has developed a processor especially designed for FPGAs. So the Cortex M1 is the first processor from ARM explicitly designed for the FPGA market. To understand the ARM architectures better we need to have a quick look on the instruction set and on the evolution of the instruction set. Some people are a little bit confused when we say the V4 instruction set is for an ARM 7 TDMI. But if you look on the picture, these has been developed independently of this. So ARM has developed an instruction set and out of this instruction set, processors, uh, processor architectures have been developed. So we are now from V4 instruction set up to V7 R and A instruction set, which includes very high sophisticated instructions for multimedia design and things. So this is clearly not for the microcontroller market. And so ARM decided to have a subset of that, which is the V7M architecture, which includes this SUM2 instruction set only explicitly for the microcontroller market for the Cortex-M architecture. Well, further setup or a subset of that is the for the Cortex M1 for especially for the FPGA market. So the Cortex M1 processor is a small, explicitly designed version of the ARM architecture for the FPGA market. So in this case, the Cortex M1 processor is a three-stage pipeline, is as we are used with ARM, a 32-bit RISC processor architecture. So this Cortex M1 is highly configurable for depending on the trade-offs for your design. So, but it, the important point is it remains the same instruction set model as for any other ARM architecture. In this case, the uh, von Neumann architecture has in the first one megabyte an exception and you can include, depending on the resources of your FPGAs, internal block RAM on in for as tightly coupled memories, which can be between 0k and uh, one megabyte. So these tightly coupled memories for the instruction and for the data can be configured. Also for the Cortex-M architecture ARM has developed some specific debug logic which are for the FPGA optional and you can implement different sizes of them depending on your resources and depending on your final version for example for the FPGA. Um, ARM has implemented in the Cortex-M architecture an integrated interrupt controller. So different to all other ARM architectures before, in this case in the Cortex-M architecture and now for the Cortex-M1, the vector interrupt controller is a fixed part of the processor core itself. So for the Cortex-M1 it can be configured to either have one interrupt, 8, 16 or 32-bit interrupts. Um, it's software programmable, so you can have software levels. In this case, for the Cortex M1, you can have four levels, so you have two bits available for this. The first time also ARM has implemented for the Cortex M architecture a non maskable interrupt. 
Uh, one specific feature for the Cortex M1 is also that you can choose between a fast and uh, slower implementation for the multiply instruction. So depending on the resources of your FPGA, you can uh, use DSP blocks, for example, to implement a fast multiplier, or uh, if you want to have a slower and this is not uh, so important for your application, you can implement these instruction with adders. Um, to implement other peripherals onto the core, you have the well-known AMBA bus available. In this case, it's a 32-bit interface and it's an AMBA light interface. The programmer's model for the Cortex-M architecture is as for any other ARM architecture as well. So you have the registers 1 to 15 available. Some of them have specific meanings. But the important point on this is it applies the ARM procedure call standard as for any other ARM architecture as well. So the programmer's view is really the same as for any other ARM architecture you have known before. Another very interesting and specific thing for the Cortex-M architecture is the fixed memory map. So that specific regions of the memory map are used for specific things to make it easier and it's very easy to upgrade then to Cortex-M3 or maybe other following architectures in the Cortex-M series. Uh, the interrupt handling has significantly changed for the Cortex-M architecture. Since ARM has implemented the uh, interrupt controller into this system, uh, it's automatically saving the eight registers. So the register 0 to register 3, register 12, the link register, so the return address, and the current program status register are automatically saved to the stack and are got from the stack after the handler has been executed. So this provides uh, um, this provides a low latency interrupt access and uh, entry for any incoming interrupts. One advantage for this is also that you can write all your interrupt handlers poorly in C. So it provides, it provides low latency interrupt processing and it has four bits to set by via software uh, uh, level for each interrupt itself. So the Cortex M1 is in different is available for different vendors, FPGA vendors and for different business models. So there is a low cost solution uh, available now from Actel and from Altera. And if you want to have the full flexibility, you can buy an RTL license from ARM and you can implement that on any FPGA technology you want and um, implement the ARM in the variation you need for your application. I think the big advantage with implementing ARM on an FPGA is on the software side because you can rely on the complete ecosystem of the ARM uh, environment and connected community for software tools, for software itself, uh, for middleware layers and for RTOS systems. Um, Dulos can provide you training in ARM architecture in different versions and we are a uh, proof training center for uh, Xilinx and Altera as well. So we know this material for many, many years and uh, you will find interesting tutorials and stuff and further know-how on our website. So Dulos is a training company from system design, um, system C and verification methodology down to uh, hardware description languages. So feel free to have a look on further information on our website. Thank you very much.